thank you very much, and uh, Mr. Chairman. And I would also like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this to this most in, uh, to this most interesting event. I'm a political scientist by training. Uh, we like we like to nitpick and analyze uh, uh, what's happening uh, all over the world. But I will be concentrating on Turkey and especially Turkish venture with Europe. Because to me, a very important part, a very important aspect of Europe uh, was the impact that it would have on Turkish democracy itself for the consolidation of Turkish democracy. So uh, what happened in the early 2000s with a new government and with a very sincere efforts to establish closer links with Europe to undertake reforms, we were very, very hopeful. And I think that was the golden age of, a golden age of Turkish-European relations. And we were looking towards the future with, with confidence. But then things started to go bad. And uh, I would try to analyze the events that led to that deterioration uh, between uh, Turkey in the relations between Turkey and the European Union. First, for perhaps, is Cyprus and the delusion it created vis-a-vis -vis EU after the Cypriot referendum of 2004. This was, I think, a very important event for internal Turkish politics because that led to a very uh, disillusionment with, with Europe. I would also add the uh, syndrome of broken promises that are coming from, that came from Europe, or that Europe did not f fulfill. And of course, uh, President Sarkozy and various other people in Austria and in Germany, their statements that Turkey does not really belong in Europe started itching the age-old problems in Turkey, Turkish questions about are we in Europe or not type of thing. So, uh, as a result, the gradually, ideology started to surface in Turkish politics. And this ideology, the surfacing of ideology was very closely related to the rising self-confidence, self especially after the 2008 economic crisis in Europe and the West. The country seemed to be performing very well. And... Uh, the government won elections in 2008 and 2011, resounding elections uh, in, in, on, on those dates. And uh, they had, they, uh, I think the checks and balances that Europe and international links provided for internal politics in Turkey were gradually disappearing. This is, uh, I think, a very, very important point because other checks and balances to our political scientists' heart and preference, really the other checks and balances, the military, the presence of the military in Turkish politics. And the military was backing out of Turkish politics too. So in fact, there was no opposition, there were no checks and balances, and there was a growing confidence on the part of the government because of resounding uh, success, uh, success in the elections. And we often forget that, you know, we often forget the sociological aspects of Turkish politics in the sense that we have, we have the coming of age of new sociological groups in Turkey. People who live in Anatolia, the small businessmen, people who have uh, migrated to the big cities, who exist around the big cities. They were coming of age and they were determining politics as a very having a very important impact on Turkish politics. So, of course, on their support, a different elites in Turkey uh, came to power. Uh, we all must also add the uh, disillusionment of Turkey with uh, already Minister Bausch mentioned that, of the July 2016 intervention. EU's response to Arab Spring, especially to what happened to Egypt and Syrian refugee crisis, 
is, was another point, I think, that uh, people started to question the values that Europe was standing for. <clears throat> now, looking forward, looking forward, uh, what, is, what are the chances of Turkey becoming back again a liberal, liberal democracy? more in tune with Western and European values. I've sort of been an optimistic all the time, and, uh, and I've been criticized for that, but I'm still being optimistic. Uh, I, I think the, the Turkish variety of authoritarian populist democracy that has emerged since 2008, gradually that has emerged due to lack of checks and balances, I don't think it's on the long term sustainable. Let me tell you why. Uh, because the, the sociological groups that I mentioned, they're coming of age. They will be the new middle class, the new bourgeois of Turkey, rather than, uh, rather than uh, being the winners in a, sort of a, uh, in, in a sort of a game to enrich themselves. There will be more middle class values coming in. Europe has the potential to have, a, have an impact on Turkey's political development, but right signals have to come from Europe. I mean, there are important questions with respect to, uh, with respect to the consolidation of, or with respect to the uh, uh, values that, uh, that Europe has always put forward. Uh, Now, despite all the developments that point to possible breakdown, there seem to be instances of cooperation, like customs union, Syrian refugees. Uh, I don't have time to uh, elaborate on that. But there are also challenges. I think one of the most important challenges is education in Turkey. Education seems to be moving away from a humanist plus STEM type of education to, towards a values, quote unquote, especially <coughs> Islam-oriented education. I see that as a real danger for, in the long run for the consolidation of democracy. Turkish education system, especially to the gates of the university, has a very, very important problem, I think. Uh, the media, I see it as a very important problem too, because the rising, uh, because of due to problems, international problems that has been mentioned, that we are living through, in addition to populist demo democracy, to rising nationalism in, in Turkey. And I think the media is playing a very important role as a vehicle in that process. Let me stop Thank there. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.